are all well. So I had a request to teach a animal flow flow. Now, I don't actually know animal flow because I have not done it myself. I have started to learn movement-based floor work with uh, different instructors and I am qualified in the movement flow practice. So I wanted to teach you this flow that I did with my teacher yesterday and show you how floor-based practices are not only wonderful for mobility, strength, flexibility, they're also wonderful for learning soft acrobatics and breaking them down so that you can get more advanced. So the, just to give you an example, this first move is actually the assister of a cartwheel. How could that be so? Well, when you can't go up in space, so I would do the same movement in the full progression. So the same movement is here, sliding splits, it's a cartwheel sliding splits, and now we take it back and do the cartwheel sliding splits without bringing our legs in the air, we're still sliding around, arm position's the same, and we finish the same, the only thing is our legs didn't go up. And for a lot of people, they don't have that ability, or they're still learning that. So, let's get started and see how we can transfer it all into learning. So you're going to start in a squat, however low you can go, and that's comfortable. Put some socks on so you can slip and slide. One arm, the inside arm is going to go and face backwards. The outside arm is going to come and the fingers face the wall as well. Now that outside leg follows, it turns around to the center of my hands, and now the new outside leg, which was the inside leg, follows to cross over. From this crossover, I then lift my arm and slide my feet in a straddle forward. Beautiful. So you have to leave when you're here, okay? When you're here, once the outside leg gets to center, it does no longer move until you cross the other foot as far crossed away as possible, and then you slide and push yourself forward as you come down on one arm. From there, this is the fun bit. The shoulder stand slide looks advanced and it is. It uses plow pose, it uses a lot of core, a lot of flexibility, and also a lot of awareness so you don't damage your neck or hurt yourself. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it, but I'm also gonna show you this wonderful thing where you can break it down to another move and still make this flow look absolutely beautiful. I then brought one knee in. My elbow slid down, and at first my palm was facing down, and as I get lower, my palm rolls to face up. This arm swings around, and I use this knee to push myself up. My head can either be tucked or looking up. My teacher teaches tucked. I'm okay with you looking up as long as you don't hurt your neck. You shouldn't have any pressure on your head or neck. It's very minimal as you transfer through this. And then from there, you can use this arm for support or transfer around. This leg slides into the front and watch as I come into my plow pose. This knee starts to straighten. I come onto my shoulder and then to my other shoulder. This is your plow pose, right? So from here, I'm just going to do exactly the same as you did on the other leg. Firstly, the knee comes down to support. My hand comes around to support. And then this leg swings around and I come down, right? So the wonderful thing about this is it's wonderful for straight, um, getting a lot of flexibility into your upper back. In when you often we stretch like this, this is a lovely way to do it. It's great for after back bends, or it's great to give the spine and hips more mobility, but it is quite an advanced pose. One way to learn this, and you may want to put something under your shoulder, is firstly start here. You're going to have your shoulder down and you're going to be looking at, at straight ahead. And then from there you're going to lie your feet together and down. You're going to have this to work your core. And all you're going to do is bring yourself up and down. Up as far as you can. If you need bent legs, you can. And my head is still off the ground and down. Once you have that type of core, it's the same as doing this exercise would help as well, rolling down and pushing up 
and down. And then you can also roll down, push up, and then come down, push up, and then come down. So these are exercises before you get the strength for it. Now once you have that, the next step would be if you are feeling comfortable in this roll up here, you can then go from up and round and start to practice that rotational movement, okay? And you can start to then use the knee. So now instead of being full on my stomach, I come to the side, bend my underneath knee, and I come up and down and up. And then from there, it's a matter of tucking my head, rolling onto the back of my shoulders. Keep your bottom forward. If your bottom's too far back, it becomes a whole lot of core and super hard to stay here. And then we're just rolling out. Now, because that's not for everybody, how do we break it down? It's a beautiful breakdown and a great hip mobility. So instead of doing the shoulder stand, this 90-90 movement that we all love for mobility is gonna come into play. You're going to bring your knees into 90-90. The hand is gonna come down, right? Firstly, palm facing down, palm rolls up. These fingers trace along. As you get to center, your knees come up, ready to cross over to the other side, and then you come up. So from this angle as well, you're going to go down, palm rolls up, hand rolls around, and as my elbow clinches into the side, my body does this movement. And my knees come down, my palm faces down, and it pushes me up. So this is the alternative. From there, we end up in this position. Okay? Now, when we end up in this position, it's a great position to end up in. How do we get to that push-up position? So what we can do is we can bring that leg around and in front. So from here, bring the leg around and in front and the other leg through, bent knee, kick back. Okay, a nice hip mobility. Around in front, bent knee, kick back. Now your hand would be up here, right? From here, you bring the leg back in and you touch the ankle. So back in, touch the ankle, bottom comes down. You then want to transfer butt cheek to butt cheek. So you're going to straighten the front leg, transferring this to the butt cheek. We're going to flex the foot. So from this movement, we're going to, the foot comes into the ankle. Here, we sit down on our butt cheek. We straighten the front leg. We flex the foot. Our hands come around and we come into a scorpion type push-up and swing our leg through. Beautiful. So, you can see how everything links. So let me do the whole flow without the shoulder stand. So coming down, we start with our sliding splits cartwheel. Foot from the outside comes to centre, stays there as the other foot swirls around as far as possible, crossing over, then the hand comes up when it can no longer maintain contact, and we whirl around into our sliding splits. Beautiful work. From there, we bring our knees into 90-90, and we bring our palm face down, face up, other hand around, Face up, palm to face down, and see how I'm pushing up and over. So I'm not trying to get up here, I'm coming all the way to the side, up and over. Okay, from there, I bring my foot forward, make sure that this hand is far enough away to do a lean, and turn my fingers out, kick my leg back. Bring my leg in, sit on that butt cheek, straighten out the other leg, Flex the foot, hand circular motion over. Come into that scorpion push-up position. Swing the leg through, so like you're going opposite knee, opposite elbow, last minute, glide along the floor, straighten it out. Lovely. <laughs> so from there, 
we gather our legs together and we curl our spine so we don't hurt our spine as we come down onto the floor. We bring our hand out and we're using that core strength again. So if you need to come up like this with bent legs, perfect. And you're going to go over this shoulder. So I'm going to look as I come over. I'm looking towards my shoulder that I'm coming over. So I'm looking towards it. And then I'm, my head slowly unravels as my legs come down. So I'll show you from this position here. And I'll show you how to base point that a little bit easier. My hand is out. I'm going to go over this shoulder, right? So let's say we're here after we've curled down. My legs come up. I can use the floor and push up here. I'm off to one side. My head's looking at my knees. I'm pushing up here so I can push my head through and I come down. Beautiful. And then from there, you simply bring yourself to a push up position, cross your legs through, and finish in a sliding split. So there is the full flow. If there's components that you can't work on, then you just take it to where you can. And all of these are wonderful additions to your practice. So I hope you enjoyed learning with me. I love teaching it and big credit to the movement flow system. And so for those that requested an animal flow, here is a type of flow that I would teach. I hope you have a great day. Namaste.